Why can pirates never finish the alphabet? Because they always get lost at sea. The movie begins with a tribute to San Francisco officers fallen in duty, transitioning to a scene where a man with a rifle targets a woman swimming in a rooftop pool. He shoots her, and she struggles before dying, the pool turning red with her blood. Inspector Harry Callahan investigates a murder at a rooftop pool, then tracks the likely shooter's position on a nearby roof. There he finds a shell casing, which he collects as evidence. He also discovers a note attached to a TV antenna, realizing its significance. In the mayor's office, they review a ransom note from Scorpio, who wants $100,000 to stop killing and threatens to target specific individuals next. The mayor, police chief, and Lieutenant Bressler discuss how to respond. The mayor questions Harry's actions, who sarcastically says he's been waiting in the mayor's office, then explains their investigation plan. Lieutenant Bressler adds they've set up helicopter surveillance. Despite Harry's surprise, the mayor decides to pretend to comply with Scorpio's demands in the newspaper. The mayor warns Harry against causing trouble like before. Harry retorts he was stopping a crime, sarcastically dismissing the mayor's concern. While eating a hot dog across from a bank, Harry notices a suspicious car and tells the cook to call the police, suspecting a robbery. As the bank alarm sound and gunfire breaks out, Harry confronts the robbers. He exchanges fire with them, causing their getaway car to crash and takes down the attackers, even as he's wounded in the leg. Unfazed, Harry continues eating his hot dog. Harry approaches a wounded robber near a bank, revolver in hand, and sarcastically questions whether he fired six shots or only five. Confessing he's lost count, he highlights the lethal power of his forty-four magnum and challenges the robber to gamble on his luck. The robber gives up, scared. Harry picks up the shotgun, and when the robber wonders if Harry's gun was empty, Harry fakes a shot, showing with a smile that his gun had no bullets, having bluffed the robber into surrendering. In the hospital, Harry has his wounded leg looked at by a doctor. During the process of treatment, the doctor tells Harry to have his wife to help treat his wound, but stops himself mid-sentence and apologizes. In the air, a police helicopter is making the rounds over the city. The next day, Harry walks through the department and meets with the captain, who congratulates Harry on stopping the robbery. The captain announces that he's saddling Harry with a new partner and introduces Chico Gonzalez. Harry gripes about not wanting a partner and that his partners always wind up in the hospital or dead. But the captain is unmoved and tells Harry that he doesn't have a choice. Harry and Chico walk and talk for a while, before stopping to talk with another cop, DiGiorgio. Chico warily asks how Harry got his nickname Dirty Harry. DiGiorgio fills him in, explaining that Harry is an equal opportunity bigot, hating every ethnicity equally. Chico asks how he feels about Mexicans, and Harry responds that he hates them especially. Somewhere in the city, Scorpio is on another rooftop, across from a church, reading the personal ad that contains the city's response to his ransom. Unhappy with the be patient message, he tears up the paper and walks to the roof's ledge. He opens his rifle case and begins spying down on the neighborhood through his scope. He sees a black man walking on the street and places the cross hairs on him. Scorpio follows him for a while and then hastily puts his rifle together. Before he can take his shot, though, the police chopper spots him and he is forced to retreat. That night, Harry and Chico are riding through the city, complaining about how the chopper cops lost Scorpio. Over the radio, they hear a description of the sniper, and Chico immediately spots a man fitting the description and carrying a tan suitcase. They turn around to follow him, but eventually split up, with Harry inconspicuously pursuing him on foot. Harry walks down an alley and spies the man walking into an apartment. He climbs up on a trash can and looks into the apartment window. The man's suitcase is only holding lingerie for his girlfriend, Hot Mary, who is walking around the apartment topless. Harry realizes this is not Scorpio, but is suddenly attacked from behind by a couple of men who thought he was a peeping Tom. They smack Harry around a bit before Chico stops them. Harry tells him to let the guys go, though, and Chico jokes about why the other officers call him Dirty Harry. Back in the car, Harry and Chico get a call from an officer who spots a man on a roof, and they take off in that direction. 
It turns out the man is not Scorpio, but instead, he's a suicidal jumper. Without much hesitation, Harry climbs into a crane bucket and rides up to the roof to confront the man. The jumper immediately tells Harry to stay away, and Harry tells the man he's going to keep his distance. Jumpers sometimes decide to take someone with them when they die. A grotesque story follows about a fellow officer who was killed like that. Harry includes all the gory details causing the man to become sick. Angered, he attempts to grab at Harry, but Harry's quicker and punches him out, cuffs him to the rails on the crane bucket, and brings him down. On the street, Harry tells Chico he got his nickname by taking any dirty job that comes along. The next day, Harry and Chico are called to the site of a dead body. A young black kid is found shot in the head. As Harry and Chico are looking over the crime scene, the boy's mother tells them her son was only 10 years old. Another officer finds a shell casing that confirms the boy was killed by Scorpio. Harry has a meeting with the chief, and they discuss the plan to capture Scorpio. They will post highly visible policemen all over the city at high probability targets, but no policemen near the site where the chopper had spotted him the day before. Harry and Chico will stake out the area, armed and ready to take Scorpio down if he appears. Chico expresses his doubts that Scorpio will target the same area twice, but Harry explains that he believes the sniper will want to take out a priest now. That night, the two detectives are watching over the church. Harry tells Chico that the priest of the church volunteered to be bait for the murderer. With binoculars, Harry spies on the entire neighborhood, including a nude woman and her two male companions. As he's watching the party, he notices that one of the nearby roof doors is now open. Harry and Chico prepare to throw the spotlight on Scorpio, and Harry takes aim with his rifle. He fires, but misses. Scorpio fires on them with a machine gun, but misses, destroying the lights. He laughs gleefully as he fires. Harry and Chico rush downstairs and across the street, where De Giorgio kneels over the body of an officer that Scorpio apparently killed in his escape. The next day, the captain informs Harry and his partner Chico that Scorpio has kidnapped a 14-year-old girl, and Mary Deacon, claiming he's buried her alive and demands a $200,000 ransom by 9 p.m., or the girl will die. Despite Harry's belief that the girl might already be dead, they learn the mayor has agreed to pay. Harry is tasked with delivering the money alone, as Chico is ordered not to assist. Chico comments on Harry's tough luck, hinting at why he's nicknamed Dirty Harry. Harry prepares for the drop by getting a microphone to put under his shirt, so that Chico can furtively follow him. Harry gets the money from the mayor's office. While the captain tells Harry that Scorpio will probably run Harry all over town before he drops the money, Harry tapes a switchblade to his ankle. The captain tells Harry to play it straight and not to try anything funny. Harry arrives at the marina, the designated drop point, and answers a nearby payphone. Scorpio tells him he's going to give Harry a little exercise and intends to have him travel all over the city on foot to make sure he's not being followed. Hidden nearby in his car, Chico listens in. Scorpio instructs Harry to run to a nearby railroad station. He makes it and answers the Scorpio's call. Harry next has to make a train that is leaving the station immediately. Barely making it, he jumps on and rides to the next checkpoint. Chico continues to follow. Harry answers the next call, and Scorpio laughs as he tells Harry that he's going to have a long run now. While running, Harry is accosted by three thugs who try to take the money back. It's a short delay, but Harry can't afford it, and he quickly beats the three goons down. He sprints to the phone, but a man answers it before Harry can. Scorpio hangs up, but calls back immediately, giving Harry instructions to run to Mission Davis Park and meet him there at the foot of the cross. Chico follows, but keeps a safe distance. Harry walks through the park, taking a look at everyone he passes. A young man that Harry thinks may be Scorpio turns out to be a male hustler, so Harry runs him off. He makes it to the top of the hill in Mission Davis Park, at the foot of the large stone cross. Scorpio shows up wearing a ski mask. Scorpio disarms Harry and starts to beat him. He tells Harry that he changed his mind and has decided to let the girl die, and now he's going to kill Harry too. Before he can, though, Chico shoots at him, but misses. 
Scorpio and Chico exchange fire, and Chico is hit in the chest. Harry pulls the switchblade from his leg and plunges it deep into Scorpio's leg. Scorpio screams and limps off. Harry tries to shoot at Scorpio, but misses, and then passes out from the beating. Scorpio makes it to a hospital. In his office, the hot-headed wrestler is talking to the chief on the phone. The chief is not happy that Harry and Chico disobeyed orders. Harry tells Bressler he'll quit when this is over, if that's what the chief wants. They get a call from a doctor at an emergency room. The doctor reports treating a man with a stab wound in the leg. Harry and DiGiorgio talk to the doctor who isn't very helpful at first, but he does remember that he had seen the man before. After a few moments, he remembers that the man works as a groundskeeper at a nearby stadium. Harry and DiGiorgio climb the fence outside the stadium and inspect the grounds in the dark. Scorpio spies on them and eventually takes off running. Harry chases him while DiGiorgio looks for a way to turn on the lights. Scorpio is running across the football field when Harry finally catches up to him and DiGiorgio hits the floodlights. Harry shoots Scorpio in the leg to stop him. As Scorpio cries for help and protests, Harry insists on knowing the girl's location, dismissing Scorpio's claim of an attempt on his life with a stern warning. When Scorpio demands his rights and a lawyer, Harry presses on his wound to force information, highlighting the tension between them at Kizer Stadium. At dawn, Harry stands on a hilltop overlooking the Golden Gate Bridge. Behind him, officers are pulling the dead body of Anne Mary Deacon out of the ground. Harry learns from the assistant district attorney, William Rothko, that Scorpio will be released because Harry's search was illegal, making the rifle found inadmissible in court. Despite Harry's outrage over the disregard for the victim's rights, the DA dismisses his concerns, citing the law. Harry, frustrated, declares the law crazy. Upon leaving, Harry vows to arrest Scorpio the moment he makes a mistake. The DA warns against harassment, but Harry counters, stating Scorpio's sociopathic nature means he will continue his crimes because he enjoys them too much. Scorpio walks into a park in the middle of the day and immediately notices Callahan following him. Sitting in a stag bar, he sees Harry watching him. The next day, Scorpio meets with a tough-looking black guy in a rundown factory. The other man makes sure Scorpio wasn't followed and then leads him to a back room, where he takes payment from Scorpio. $200 for the man to beat Scorpio to a pulp. He sits him in a chair and then begins punching him in the face. He lands several heavy blows, but eventually grows dubious and stops. Scorpio taunts him with racist remarks and the black man kicks him in the face. Realizing that his victim is insane, he kicks Scorpio out. In the next scene, Scorpio, in a hospital, claims to reporters that the San Francisco police, especially Harry, are responsible for his injuries, despite the exaggeration. When the chief discusses this with Harry, Harry remarks that Scorpio's condition doesn't match what would have happened if he'd been responsible. The chief then tells Harry to stop following Scorpio, to which Harry reacts with disbelief. Harry visits Chico at the hospital, who tells him he's quitting the police to become a teacher. After Chico goes to therapy, Harry talks with Chico's wife outside. She feels guilty for Chico's decision, fearing for his safety and wonders if Harry's wife felt the same. Harry reveals his wife died in a drunk driving accident and expresses understanding for Chico's choice. When asked why he remains a cop, Harry admits he doesn't know. Later that night, the killer Scorpio enters a liquor store and chats with the shopkeeper. To explain his beaten face, he makes up a lie about hitting his wife and being beaten by her brother. He asks the owner about his being robbed before, and the owner admits to shooting and killing the last two robbers. He brags and shows off his pistol to show Scorpio. Scorpio instantly smashes a bottle over the shopkeeper's head and takes the gun. The next scene shows a school bus dropping children off at the end of a school day. Scorpio climbs into the bus pretending to be a school bus inspector. When the driver tries to stop him, Scorpio pulls the gun on her. He tells her to start driving, he'll direct her. He then turns his attention to the kids, making them sing. At City Hall, Harry and his captain head to the mayor's office, discussing a new message from Scorpio. Inside, they learn Scorpio has taken a bus hostage, 
demanding a jet and $200,000 to fly out of the city. The mayor naively assures Scorpio of his safety during a call. When asked to deliver the ransom without intervening, Harry refuses, telling the mayor to find someone else for the task. On the bus, Scorpio initially has the children singing wildly, but they soon start complaining, wanting to go home. Scorpio quickly loses patience, slapping one boy and scaring the children even more. He gives the bus driver more directions and has her exit the highway. They are headed for an underpass, and Scorpio panics when he sees Harry standing on top of the bridge, waiting for him. Harry jumps on the roof of the moving bus, and Scorpio starts shooting up at him, causing the bus driver to faint. Scorpio takes the wheel and swerves the bus all over the road, trying to throw Harry off. He crashes the bus through a fence, sending Harry flying into a mound of sand. Scorpio jumps out of the back emergency exit and flees to a nearby mill. Harry chases him. While running, they exchange gunfire, and once again, we lose track of how many shots Harry has fired. Harry is gaining on Scorpio, so he tries to ambush him, but Harry ducks and Scorpio misses. Scorpio runs out the back of the mill and to a small dock where a young boy is fishing. With Harry not far behind him, Scorpio grabs the boy and puts the gun to his head, yelling at Harry to drop his gun. Harry drops his arm to his side, but quickly brings it back up and shoots Scorpio in the shoulder, knocking him backwards. The boy escapes and quickly runs away. Harry confronts Scorpio, aiming his revolver at him, and seriously repeats his earlier warning about the 44 Magnum's power, questioning Scorpio's luck in this deadly situation. Scorpio laughs and tries for his gun, but Harry shoots him in the chest, resulting in Scorpio's death in the water. Scorpio's fatal mistake was underestimating Harry. Sirens wail in the distance. He pulls his gold star out of the leather fold and looks at it for a moment, before throwing it into the water. The camera pans away from Harry as he walks away and the credits roll. If you enjoyed this video, don't be shy to hit the like button, and if you disliked it, hit the dislike button twice, just to be sure. It would be best if you watched the whole movie. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe for more videos like this.